Hello lovelies. Today we're going to look at some art and I'll talk to you about my plans for a large upcoming project. I've been very interested in the art of the Renaissance and Baroque periods and I've been wanting to do a project using something from that period as an inspiration for a very long time. The Italian Renaissance roughly covers the late 15th to early 17th centuries, though there are some arguments debating the exact timeline. It's kind of hard to know when a Renaissance exactly begins or ends. For the purposes of this project, I'm embracing the long Renaissance theory. Italy at that time was a collection of city-states, not the unified nation it is today. And during the Renaissance, art and culture experienced great growth and a lot of support. Art was no longer solely just for churches, but also something that had a place in secular society as well. Many famous pieces of Renaissance art are very stylistic and romanticized, depicting classical and religious stories and figures. So when you're trying to create a historical costume based off of a painting, there are some challenges. It's hard to know what's stylized, allegorical, or exaggerated, and that's okay. When it comes to a lot of historical recreation, there is an element of interpretation anyway. So in this case, I'm interpreting an artist's interpretation. When I was thinking about artists to use as inspiration for this project, I kept coming back to Artemisia Gentileschi, and I'm going to apologize right now for any poorly pronounced Italian on my part. I speak a bit of French and Korean, but I only know a handful of words in Italian, so I just wanted to get that out of the way now. Now many of you probably haven't heard of Artemisia Gentileschi. She's not a Botticelli, a Michelangelo, or even a Caravaggio. She was active in the early 17th century, the end of the Renaissance, and is often considered to be a Baroque painter. But I'm very interested in her work for several reasons. First, she is one of the few women artists to be patronized by the Medici family, and was the first woman to be accepted to the Accademia dell'Arte del Signo in Florence. So that tells me that not only did she have to be quite talented, she also had to be quite tenacious. Second, she's quite a fascinating figure in general. I recommend reading up on her life. Even just starting with the Wikipedia page will give you a good overview. But basically, she was the victim of sexual abuse and betrayal, and she fought for justice in the courts. Justice was never carried out, and her reputation was tainted. She was well known for this circumstance. So instead of simply giving up to live a quiet life, she sort of used this as PR. Many of her paintings focus on fallen women or avenging women, and in many of her paintings, these characters are actually self-portraits. She made four paintings on the subject of the apocryphal story of Judith beheading Holofernes, and in all of them, she is the basis for Judith, and some have speculated that her rapist is actually the basis for Holofernes. She made her career by leaning into this image of herself as a wronged woman. Perhaps because so many of her works were self-portraits, and simply because she used a much more naturalistic style than many painters of the time, her work gives us a very different look at a woman from the late Renaissance. Instead of a placid beauty, her paintings are of determined, motivated women. Compare her painting of Judith, which I was fortunate enough to see at the Uffizi in Florence several years ago. With Caravaggio's depiction of Judith. Gentileschi's Judith is a grown woman who has quite a bit of physical strength. She depicts the physical struggle of Judith's maid holding down Halfernes and the strength it would take to saw off a man's head. Caravaggio's Judith is a flinching child. She is the idealized image of female beauty, just old enough to marry very pale and delicate, with golden hair and pert bosom that defy gravity with no visible support garments. She's so young and waifish, one wonders how she had the strength to pick up that sword. She's tentative and reluctant to, to perform this bloody task, 
but she's being egged on by this gnarled old woman who is the physical opposite of her femininity. Caravaggio was painting to this stylized look of the Renaissance. He was making a beautiful picture. Gentileschi was showing a more realistic, gritty depiction of the scene that is a lot more charged with emotion and also seems to take into account the more modern knowledge of anatomy with her realistic depiction of arterial spray. I appreciate the detail of a few small blood spatters on Judith's dress as well. Instead of showing us allegorical women wearing fantastical garments and representing beauty and virtue, Gentle as she gives us real women with real emotions wearing something a lot closer to real historical garments women of the era were wearing. So I'm taking inspiration from a few of her paintings. From what I've read about this time period of fashion in Italy, I've gathered that it was a bit different than most of the rest of Western Europe at this time. While stiffer, conical undergarments, large ruffs, big skirt supports, and generally more unnatural silhouettes were all the rage in the early 17th century in places like England, Italy was going for a softer silhouette. I can't find a lot of evidence of a separate support garment for the bust in this era in Italy, particularly for middle class women, like a painter would be. It seems like their overdresses were stiffened to provide some bust support, and many were laced on the side rather than at the front during this time, at least from the images I've seen. One interesting note I found in my research is that in Venice, at least, by the early 1600s, women had started wearing drawers under their clothing, similar to men's breeches at the time. So this is a very early adoption of an underpants garment for women. It was a time of full, wide sleeves, lots of soft pleating around the neck and waist, and big, full draping skirts. Artemisia, I feel we're on a first name basis by now, painted many of her women in bright yellow dresses with very full sleeves coming from a shift or underdress, often covered with a full oversleeve that in some cases looks to be tied on at the shoulder. The waistline of these gowns seems to be higher than the Elizabethan fashion as well, with heavily pleated skirts, most likely with a petticoat underneath for a little extra volume. But Artemisia's women don't seem to be wearing any sort of skirt supports like a bum pad or a Spanish farthingale. It all flows very naturally. Whether that's an artistic choice to paint the skirts in a more dynamic flowing way, or those supports simply weren't popular in Italy at this time, I'm not sure. I also won't be making my dress yellow, simply because I look terrible in yellow. Fortunately, Artemisia depicted some of her heroines in lovely shades of blue, including one of her depictions of Judith, so I think I'll go in that direction. I might, however, do a yellow petticoat just as an homage to her, because throughout the Renaissance, a contrasting petticoat seems to be a trend. This is going to be a fairly large project, but I'm really excited about it. I think it's very interesting to explore this era in particular, and Artemisia Gentilesi is such a fascinating person and painter. Her painting style is very different, and it gives us more insight into real women of this time. I'll be working on this outfit from the skin out and giving you updates piece by piece. I expect this will come together gradually over the next few months, since I still need to gather the materials and I'll be sewing this all by hand, so it'll take some time. <laughs> if you're interested in seeing this project come to life, please subscribe and I'm going to try to update it as often as I humanly can. If you also want to send me any historical sources to help me with my continuing research on 17th century Italy, please drop some links in the comments so I can go study them myself. And if you want to support my work and help speed up this project a little bit, I will link my Etsy store and my Ko-Fi pages in the description. Just watching and subscribing is a huge help though. It always brings me closer to being able to monetize and reinvest that money into the projects I do. So thank you so much for the support you've given me just by being here. Bye.